typical life of a landlord. While I'm trying to get the garages set for these rentals, uh, downstairs tenant calls Lauren and tells her that the flow on his kitchen sink is very low. So I think what happened is when we had the hot water heater issue and we shut down the main, and then when we turned it back on and air gets in the lines and kicks up a lot of that sediment in the bottom of the water heater, I think that it's probably at the faucet all kind of gunked up and, and messed up. So actually got a brand new one. First, you just want to disconnect everything. You want to disconnect the hose, the sprayer hose, and up underneath the uh, the faucet, they have these little clips that clamp up underneath the bottom of the sink. So just disconnect all that, and you should be able to just slide it right out. See how we did. Nice, much, much better. Yeah, so there was probably some, uh, just some sediment um, that got clogged up into that faucet. So we got it back working. Let's get back to work upstairs. So after talking with my plumber, the diverter for the shower is about chin high. And we took it off and the, you know, the tile's all cut, so it looks pretty terrible. I'm gonna call Lauren and see if I can uh, talk her into tearing it out and replacing with new tile. So you're gonna watch it live because she was pretty adamant on keeping it and reglazing it. So we'll see how this phone call goes. Hey baby. Hey. So I gotta talk to you about the tile. For where? For the bathroom. I mean, you know how we were talking about reglazing it? Yes. So I think we should replace it. Why? Um, because- <laughs> Did you accidentally tore it down? I, <laughs> I did not accidentally tear it down. No, this time it's because the, like where you turn the water on and off. And so you think that warrants taking down all of the tile and redoing it? Yes, because I already did the measurements. Yeah, talk numbers to me. Okay. It's 90 square feet. The tile that we like for that size and brand at Home Depot is a dollar seventy nine. So it's like it's like two hundred and seven it's like hundred and seventy bucks? I don't know, I'm bad at random but quick quick math. <laughs> and then I have thin set and I have grout and we have to buy hardy for the floor anyway. The only reason why I'm okay with it is because whoever tiled it to begin with did a pretty crappy job. So what are you saying? I mean, I feel like you're not really giving me an option. <laughs> you're kind of telling me that the tile has to come down. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. Okay, bye. Bye. Woo! It's the little wins. It's gonna look much better because the rest of the bathroom is gonna be brand new. You can't have that old crappy tile sitting in there. It's always gonna be the thing that sticks out to me if we didn't replace it. Old crappy tile with brand new bathroom. It's not a good look. Back at it again, day two, trying to make this wall. It's a little colder today, actually. I think I'm gonna need to throw my sweatshirt back on. And unfortunately, now that we're cutting outside, Usually we set up inside, actually. Our cut stations have most of the time been inside our projects. But you see how far, look how, look how high up that, that door is up there. I'm not, I'm not carrying this thing up there. <laughs> and then we can't throw it over the hedge when we're done. So, that was pretty convenient. And the dump is closed, so not quite sure what we're gonna do with all of this and all of this. For now, we're just gonna drive around with it, I guess. We'll, we'll make two. And 
while Kyle's farming out the kitchen, I'm gonna work on taking all this tile down because we're going to completely redo this bath surround. to demo this tile and plaster and lath, but we're keeping the tub. So I'm trying to kind of just, you know, hammer it enough where it gets loose so I can take it off and gently put it in the tub. But you know, you get a good hit and it all comes crumbling down. So it's been a little difficult. Um, <laughs> I tried to cover it, but it obviously all fell down. So fortunately I haven't made any damage yet and trying to be super careful, but um, it's coming down kind of easy. It's gonna look good. Men, they can't do anything themselves. Just like, like yeah. that, yeah. Up or down? Normally, when we realize we had to go for a Home Depot run, it's kind of annoying, but in this case, it's a good excuse to eat lunch and to use their bathroom because we don't have a functioning one at the house right now, so. Dude, look at that sandwich. It looks fantastic, but jacked <laughs> up at the same time. I'm almost done framing up this wall. I'm not gonna put the studs in right now because the plumber and the electrician are still gonna need some access and some room to move around back there when they set the low boy, so. Um, I am gonna cut them and I'm just gonna mark them each one through, you know, I think I'll probably have eight or nine, so just mark them one through nine and once I'm ready, I could just tack them right up and in. So that's where we're at right now. And Lawrence, what are you doing? About to clean up the mess I made. I'm loving my new pants. It has like a lot of pockets and I'm sure you're probably supposed to put like tools in the pockets, but I've made my own. So phone pocket, chapstick pocket, <laughs> <laughs> and my favorite pocket of all, the cheese it pocket. <laughs> like. <laughs> I like my snacks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Cheers. Just finished demoing the tile and all of the plaster and lath, and I made quite a bit of a mess. So I'm kind of just walking around waiting for Kyle to be done with his project so he can help me clean it up. What do you think about that? Um, sound like I didn't hear you. He heard me. He's gonna help me. <laughs> Initially, I had thought that we could probably pack out these bottom studs because this beam that runs this way sticks out a good I'd say half inch to three quarter inch. So I initially I packed it out with lip, kind of how these are. But I'm thinking now that I'm looking at it, the easiest way to do this because you see here, this is a big gap. That's about a little over an inch. All right. And it starts to taper off. That's about three quarters. And by the time I hit here, that's only about three eighths. So I'm thinking that the easiest way to do this is to actually just marry up some two bys on the inside and plumb them up. That's probably the easiest way. So I just took the lay I thought that I put up last time I was here, unfortunately, but uh, I'm gonna redo it and make sure that this is a nice solid wall. Uh, I don't want any problems moving forward with grout cracking or uh, tiles coming loose, so. I'm gonna start putting this hardy down for the floor. So I got this nice and shot packed up. All these tongue grooves um, secured, I screwed them in. 
And Usually, you don't want to put hardy right over top of this tongue and groove style flooring. Now, this is so old, it is so hard. I've got zero concern about any bowing and grout cracking in the future due to bowing. So, like if you were to put plywood down, you're supposed to put a bed of thin set down and then put your hardy down. So, I'm thinking I'm going to do is liquid nails my hardy right to this tongue and groove. I've got no concerns about ever having to take this out. So, I'm gluing it down. Yeah. I'm wearing normal clothes for the first time in about three weeks because today we're closing on our HELOC for one of our investment properties. And we actually started this process before COVID really started having an impact on daily business. So we're fortunate that we're able to make this happen. The bank's doing one appointment at a time, um, you know, sanitizing before and after. So excited to get this done. And our thought process behind the HELOC is, well, when we did it before COVID really started showing, it was just to take advantage of the equity we have in our property and to set us up for more buying potential in the future but now I'm glad we did it because we could also use it for reserves you know just more access to cash which I think is really important right now so let's go do that so that was the easiest thing I feel like I've ever done in a bank it's took about 13 minutes and a lot of that was us just chit-chatting yeah we have forty nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollar line of credit to pull from they're gonna be mailing us a checkbook and then a debit card, and we can kind of just use that to pull from the line, um, or we can transfer into our bank account. There's a lot of different options. They make it really easy to use those funds, which is nice. Really easy to pay them back, which is nice. So I'm excited for this. I think it's gonna be a good option for us to have access to more money. What is up, everyone? So we've officially rented this first garage bay out. Uh, so I'm gonna spend the day today just cleaning it out and getting a receptacle ran for him. In the next episode, we hardy the shower, prep for tile, and receive some unfortunate news about our kitchen cabinet order. Hit that like button, and to make sure you don't miss out, subscribe to Bigger Pockets and follow us along on Instagram at Rentals12.